Hey everybody, I wanted to do a little video um, on interpretation of basic measures of center and spread because I think this is a place where a lot of students struggle. So let's start with some data. I've got this um, four weeks of uh, minutes of FaceTime from a teenager. And um, so this is the this is the daily use of uh, FaceTime in minutes that a person used on their phone, iPhone, since it's FaceTime. Um, so let's start with the measures of center. By the way, these are not all the measures of center in the universe, but these are the three that we've talked about. And then we've got measures of spread. And we've got uh, range... IQR, standard deviation. So I'm kind of going in order of difficulty here. So I'm actually going to go and do these on separate sheets just to kind of be organized. I'll just copy this data over here. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, sort and filter this. Sorry, not filter, but just sort it. Uh, okay, great. So let's start with mean. And I want to calculate it, and then I want to say what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and just be lazy and use Excel's formulas because there are here for me. So um, is, I think there's a couple ways you can interpret this number. Um, first of all, one of the things that I'll probably do repeatedly here is switch between minutes and hours and minutes or like decimal versions of hours because I think it's going to be like more sensible. And part of what I want you to focus on when you're thinking about interpretation is what does it mean and how does it sound when I'm talking about it, right? So this, uh, way too many decimals here, um, 3.8 hours, right? I think it's a lot more understandable to say 3.8 hours than it is to say 230 minutes. 230 minutes sounds like a lot and it is, it's almost four hours, but um, just gives me a, a sharper sense of what I'm talking about. So on a typical day, this person used FaceTime for 3.8 hours. Um, if I wanted to be more kind of communicative about the actual significance of mean, I would say something more like if I took all the minutes this person used FaceTime over four weeks and spread them out evenly, they would have spent 229 minutes per day on FaceTime. That is literally what the mean is doing. Okay, let's move on to the median. What's the significance of the median? So, um, We, in the medium, we're looking for the middle number. And again, I'm going to let Excel do it for me. But I can confirm by kind of figuring out where the middle of this data set is. And it's 203. And so, again, I'm going to do a quick conversion into hours. And so we get about 3.4 hours. So I would say, again... I could use this typical day sentence because that is the significance. Um, on a typical day, this person used FaceTime for 3.4 hours. Shoot. Let's try to get it here and use my previous sentence. But if I wanted to say it more accurately, I could say if I took all the numbers and lined them up, I would find the middle number would be 203 minutes. So that is literally what's happening with the median. I was trying to describe more specifically what I'm finding there. All right, and finally, let's do mode. I have no idea whether there's going to be a mode. I typically will use mode.mult so that if there's multiple repeats, we can get those multiple repeats. It's important when you do that that there's nothing below mode, and it turns out there was not. 
there was actually literally no repeats here. So there is no meaning to the mode here because there were no repeated values. And that's what mode is looking for, which value is repeated the most. If I turn this into a picture, I can, I can see a mode by collecting the ranges right into groups. So if I just go insert histogram, bam, then the modal value is between zero and 240 minutes. Like that was the most common uh, result for the 28 days was somewhere between zero and that's four hours. So uh, between zero and four hours, that's a, that's a very broad spectrum. And again, We've talked about how to actually use a pivot table or a count if structure to create a little more nuance because these are very thick bars. These are like four hour blocks. So it might be interesting for me to be like, okay, well, let me just go in here and make a pivot table. Oops. Make a pivot table and say, all right, I want to get my face time usage into my rows and my values. And then I want to get my grouping on here. So now I have control over the grouping. So if I went from zero to 60, no, ending at, sorry, 847, let's say I'm going to count by 60. So I want a multiple of 60, that would be 4,900. And I'm going to count by 60s. Now I can make a graph of this. Did I do the sums? No, I don't want sums. I want the counts. Okay, that makes more sense. And now I've got insert in my bar here. Uh, sorry, not histogram, just a regular column chart. But I want to make sure that I'm changing my gap width down to zero. Okay, so this is my um, this is my situ my distribution here, and it really shows more of a bimodal distribution. By bimodal is just a fancy way to say there's two kind of peaks here, right? There were a lot of days. There's I mean, this, whether you regard this as a third peak or not is up to you, but you know, there were quite a few days where actually there was very little relatively FaceTime going on, like an hour of FaceTime. And then there was a bunch of days where there was between three and four hours of FaceTime. Um, so, you know, this is kind of a complicated distribution. It's definitely not normal. Anyways, I'm just going on about mode because it turned out that mode wasn't very interesting based on the fact that there was actually literally no repeat values. All right, let's move on to measures of spread. And we'll do it again. Copy this. <clears throat> and let me get my measures of spread on here. So again, measures of spread is a way to look at variation. So we have different ways to talk about variation. The first one, and the most simplest, I think, is range, just looking at the max minus the min. So I take the max of this data set, which is, I think, A2 to A29, and I subtract the min from A2 to A29. And that's 847, because there was a day that there was no FaceTime happening, and then some day where there was like nine hours of FaceTime happening, which is kind of remarkable. Again, this is minutes. And I may, I may want to convert this into hours, <clears throat> just so I can go 14 hours, not nine hours, my God. Okay, um, and again, I don't need all those decimals, so I could say something like that. So I could say um, the range, so how would I say this? The range between... It's kind of ranges is a technical term, and it's also kind of just a basic term that sort of describes the situation between the top and bottom values in this data set is 14.1 hours. Um, so I could say, to not use the technical term, I could say the distance between the top and the bottom values in this data set is 14.1 hours. So there's a lot of spread if we think about the range. Let's look at the inner quartile range. So for that one, we need quartile one and quartile three. I'll go ahead and use the quartile.exe definition, A2 to A29, comma, one. And then I'll just copy this bad boy. We actually need almost the exact same thing. And I'll put in a three there. 
Okay. So inner quartile range is just Q3 minus Q1. So I get a smaller number. And again, this is in minutes, and I can convert it into hours if I wanted, divided by 60. <clears throat> And shorten this up a little bit. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. So to interpret this, now what's key here, and I think it's nice to actually look at the graph here. So I'm going to go ahead and do a box plot, insert this guy, box and whisker. So the interquartile range is marking the distance from the top, Q3, to the bottom, Q1. And what's interesting is that this marks out 50% of the data. So it's half of the data. But it's the middle half of the data. It's not the lower half or the top half. What I get when I take the median and I split it into two blocks is here's the top 50%, here's the bottom 50%. Interquartile range is actually the middle 50%. And so that's what I'm going to say when I describe this. So I'm going to move the, well, first let me delete what I just wrote there. And hook and hop and move this over here. So I would say, Use wrap text here so we don't lose the sentence. There we go. And then I would say the distance between the first and third quartiles is 4.4 hours. That is 50% of the data is contained in a 4.4 hour window going from, um, and I guess I need to convert these into hours if I'm gonna keep this up. Decimals. 1.3 hours on the low end to 5.7 hours on the high end. Okay, let me get myself a few more boxes here. Oops, I lost some of my sentence. I need even more. Okay, so this is definitely a more complicated sentence in interpretation the IQR value is just literally, you know, Q3 minus Q1, so it's 4.4 hours, but I think it's nice to kind of explain it's between this low point and this high point, which is Q1 and Q3. Um, okay, so let's label this minutes, label this hours. All right, and then the last one is the most complicated, and we looked at how to do this by hand. Um, just clear range IQR and finally standard deviation. So first of all, deciding whether this is going to be the sample or the population depends on what I'm studying. If I'm studying the four weeks of phone use, then it's the population. If I'm using the four weeks as a sample, which represents the larger, you know, phone use of this person, then I would call this a sample. I feel like I just repeated myself. So because I think the second one is more compelling, that this four weeks is representative of this person's phone use in whole, I'm going to call this a sample. So we're going to do the standard deviation sample, which is equal to stdev.s. And I will take the data. Okay. And so I got this number. And again, this is minutes. And so again, I take this number divided by 60 and I get hours. I'm going to shorten up some decimals here because I don't need all of that. Okay, so now I'm going to interpret the standard deviation. So the average distance from the mean of a data point is 3.4 hours. So the data is quite spread out. Um, I'd say quite spread out because, you know, I mean, the top value is 14 hours and we've got an average distance of 3.4 hours away from the center. So things are all over the place in terms of, 
you know, this the usage of this uh, person's, uh, you know, FaceTime. So um, that's it. Those are the those are kind of sentences which describe each of the three classical measures of center, measures of spread, and um, using a context that, you know, is not specific to your project, but is just meant to help you kind of talk about something which you can relate to. All right. Hope that was helpful.